Think of a dangerous toy. Are you thinking of a sharp toy or maybe a toy with small parts? Dangerous toys are almost a contradiction because toys are obviously made to be as safe as possible. And while toys have been released in the past that have been a danger to children or at least somewhat inappropriate, to a Jehovah's Witness, a dangerous and inappropriate toy looks like this. A smiley wizard. And it's not because the one could pose a threat of asphyxiation, it's because Jehovah personally hates this toy. Oh no, it's Sparlock! Caleb! We need someone to save Ca us! Caleb! Sparlock can activate Caleb. your magic, Sparlock! Hi! How was school today? Fine. Look at Sparlock's magic cape. Caleb, what toy is that? It's Sparlock, the warrior wizard! Whoa, a warrior wizard! This is the second Caleb and Sophia animation they ever did. You can tell because we both look pretty bad, especially compared to how we look in more recent animations. I'm not even wearing my signature t-shirt I expertly recreated. That's how important it was for Jehovah's Witnesses to warn about toys like Sparlock. It was literally at the top of their priority list as soon as they started making videos for children. And look at the expressions of disgust in my mom's face. She's made to be the voice of reason in this story. The example that Jehovah's Witnesses parents should try to live up to and every kid should listen to. And this is how she reacts. Yeah, my friend gave it to me. All the kids are going to see the movie. Can I see it too? Oh, your friend gave this to you. Hmm, you look pretty excited about this. Why don't you come over here and get your snack, okay? <sighs> Any other parent would be happy about this turn of events. Her kid has a friend at school who appreciates him so much that gave him one of their own toys. Caleb is being so nice and friendly at school that he has a group of kids who want him to join them to watch a kid's movie after school. This would be a pretty good day for practically any parent and their kid. But my mom isn't any parent. She's a Jehovah's Witness. What she sees instead is that one of the worldly people her kid interacts with gave him a dangerous item that can't be in the house. And now she needs to get ready to break the news. Instead of doing whatever she was planning on doing, like cleaning or cooking, she now has to spend time indoctrinating and scaring her kid. And even Jehovah's Witnesses can't help but be truthful about how taxing and tiresome this whole thing is. Is this toy magical? Mm-hmm. Caleb, who likes magic? Jehovah or Satan? Satan. Right. Magic is bad. That's why Jehovah hates it. Do you really want to play with something that Jehovah hates? So my mom is saying that Sparlock is bad because Jehovah hates magic. This is a simplistic take that makes Jehovah's Witnesses believe they can't read Harry Potter, play Dungeons and Dragons, or have a Smurf toy. And with Sparlock, it's no different. Sparlock is a magician. God hates magic, therefore God hates Sparlock. But God doesn't hate magic. God does magic all the time in the Bible, like when he stopped the sun for Joshua, or when he resurrected Jesus, or when he gave Moses the power to part the Red Sea. Jehovah's Witnesses solve this clear contradiction like many other Christians. They arbitrarily define anything supernatural that wasn't from God as magic, and anything supernatural coming from God as miracles. But that division has only been around since the 19th century, when magic was being portrayed as a pagan practice by Christians. That's not how it was seen when the Bible was written. Let's bring back Moses, for example. Moses is commanded by God in a burning bush to go and liberate the Israelites. Moses is nervous because the Pharaoh has powerful sorcerers on his side, so God gives him a small power. If he puts his hand in his pocket then takes it out, the hand will look like it's covered with leprosy, which he can reverse by putting it in his pocket and taking it out again. God doesn't tell Moses, don't worry, their powers are fake, or their powers come from demons, just say Jehovah and you'll be fine. No, he sees that Moses is afraid of the sorcerer's magic and gives Moses magic of his own to use against them. And we see it play out very clearly when Moses confronts Pharaoh and his sorcerers in a very Egyptian magical duel, where the sorcerers turn their staff into snakes and Moses and Aaron counteract by turning their staff into snakes that eat the other snakes. If you read just a bit of history behind this passage, you realize that Moses here is pictured as defeating the Egyptians in their own turf. The Egyptians stood at Heka, which was the word for magic and medicine. 
and which Moses also studied when he was being raised as an Egyptian prince. Then the sorcerers try to use Heka against Moses, and Moses is shown as being more powerful in Heka by doing the same that sorcerers did, but better. The point of this story is to portray an Israelite who God gives power to, so he can become far better at Egyptian sorcery than Egyptians, defeating them using their own magic in their own territory. That's because in the Bible, sorcery isn't good or bad by itself. It's good or bad depending on its source or on the intentions on the person performing magic. People who are close to their gods are given magical powers by their gods. There isn't any wording to differentiate the powers given by God from the powers given by other supernatural forces. In the Bible, magical ability is magical ability, and it's described with the same words, regardless of where it comes from. After Moses wins his magical duel, God tells him to use his staff, which we assume is twice the girth now, to do all kinds of supernatural stuff, including transforming the Nile into blood, parting the Red Sea, and cracking water out of rocks, even without God's approval proving God had given Moses power of his own instead of drawing power from God every time. In the Moses narrative, everybody with supernatural powers uses a staff or a rod as a conduit for them, and it's only through their actions and affiliations that we can discern who's good and who's bad, not due to their magical abilities. And who besides Moses looks old and dresses up funny and uses a staff or rod to do good magical actions? But to Jehovah's Witnesses, all this context and Bible study are too advanced or complicated. Magic is bad and makes God sad, and that's bad too. Do you remember who we learned about at family worship? Who is this? Adam and Eve. Right. Did they obey Jehovah? No, they disobeyed Jehovah. And he got very sad. So what if you disobey Jehovah and play with toys he doesn't like? Do you think Jehovah will be happy? Or sad. Sad. Yeah. Do you want Jehovah to be sad? No! I don't want Jehovah to be sad with me. No, I don't want Jehovah to be sad with you either! So mom refers to their weekly indoctrination sessions to talk about Adam and Eve. The Bible doesn't give a description of Adam and Eve when they're old, but the Jehovah's Witnesses definitely show that. Mom waves this illustration saying, Adam and Eve sinned and they died. Do you want to sit and then, you know, do you want to make Jehovah sad? To which there's only one correct answer. No. There's no reasoning, no conversations, just leading yes or no questions with only one right answer. You don't want to play with Sparlock because God will be sad with you and then you will die. Caleb doesn't like this, but he knows better than to argue because there's nothing to argue about there's only one right choice. So what do you think you should do with this toy? Caleb, I am so proud of you. You made mommy very happy. And you know who else is happy? Jehovah. Yes. Jehovah loves you very much for obeying him, Caleb. And just like that, the toy Caleb's friend gave him goes straight to the trash, along with Caleb's chances of making friends at school. Jehovah's Witnesses are taught that obedience equals love. If you love Jehovah, you will obey him. If you love your parents, you will obey them. If you love the governing body, you will obey them. They don't question it because they've been taught this false equivalency since they're children, as we can clearly see from this video made for children. But above all, this video shows the religion's hypocrisy. After all, there is no rule that Jehovah's Witnesses have to follow that the religion hasn't broken. The religion tells its followers to always be truthful, but they lie whenever they see fit. The, the nature of the relationship then of a disfellowship person is not completely shunned. As far as their family members are concerned, normal family relations continue with the exception of spiritual fellowship. They tell their followers to wait to start their lives and build their houses until paradise, but they accumulate money as they build their own houses for paradise today. And they tell followers to stay away from magic. They teach them to throw away anything that looks even remotely magical, no matter how nice, positive, and whimsical it might be. And to do that, they have to create, model, color, light, and animate their own little nice, positive, whimsical wizard. Whereas a kid will get in trouble for even drawing magic. They put Bethelites to work full-time doing the same thing for the religion. 
They tell little kids around the world to throw away their Yu-Gi-Oh cards and their Harry Potter books, while they themselves create the same content and hold on to it, refusing to throw it away. And I can prove it. Look at Sparlock. He was designed for one purpose, so I could throw it in the garbage when I was a kid. The religion is telling all of us that they believe Sparlock belongs in the trash and that placing it in the trash makes Jehovah happy. But I have a suspicion that they don't really believe it. That's why for a while now, I've been working with a designer to bring Sparlock back. After all, why not? Watchtower is saying they want Sparlock in the trash and my car literally broke down yesterday as I was planning a trip. They're telling everybody that they should get rid of Sparlock and if they don't want it, surely they won't mind if I get it back now, right? Sparlock is a 3D printed, hand painted figurine that you can now get on Etsy with free shipping. But you don't have to buy one if you want one. Starting April, I'll be selecting one random patron to give a Sparlock like this to every other month. It doesn't matter how much you support me with, you'll be eligible to win one. Cupcake, tight pants, and flying high tiers will get one, two, and three tickets each, and Sparlock will, of course, get five tickets. I only have 10 patrons at the moment, so your chances of winning are pretty good. Whether you want to buy one, win one, or even just share how Sparlock looks like in real life with a friend, you can join me in challenging Watchtower. What's it gonna be, governing body? Will you obey your own advice of leaving Sparlock in the trash and allow me to sell it? Or will you send a cease and desist to one of your own victims, acting like a little kid who sees someone playing with the toys they don't want and going, mine, mine, mine. Get your Sparlock while we find out.